Hey, uh, this is Blakey Rat. Let's, uh, let's play the latest in the Elder Scrolls series. This is Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, not actually made by Bethesda. It's actually made by, uh, well, it does have the Bethesda logo on it, I guess. But it's made by Zenimax Online, which is a division of Zenimax Media, which is the company that owns Bethesda. Go figure. So, uh, this is a massively multiplayer game and actually has not a ton to do with the other Elder Scrolls game, which is kind of... Well, I mean, not a ton. It takes place in the same universe and stuff like that, but it's a very different type of game. It's actually way far closer to a traditional MMO. It's actually kind of a combination between a traditional MMO and uh, Elder Scrolls type game, and hopefully you'll see what I mean as we play through it. And it sounds like a weird combination that can never work. It actually works pretty good. So you can see I already have a couple characters here. Uh, all uh, Khajiit, of course, because I'm a huge furry. But anyway, let's go ahead and create our character, uh, Nazar Dar. And um, one thing you'll notice about this game is it has a heck of a lot of uh, of character. Wow, it, it randomly picks a race and it happened to pick the one I wanted. So look at that. Uh, it has a heck of a lot of character customization options, which being being an MMO, you, you kind of hope for and expect. So um, I'm just going to, instead of going through, uh, let's, let's quick like go through all the sliders here. There's a couple different classes here. Uh, the nice thing about these classes is none of them are like traditional uh, fighter tank uh, healer type classes. They're actually, you can basically make any kind of character in any class and not only that is the classes only affect your magical abilities and if you want to just do a stock weapon using character like if you just want to use bows without any magic you can do that and pick literally any one of these classes and just level up the bow the bow skills instead um so we have some sliders here uh we can make them fat which is kind of funny i guess or really skinny um you can select a bunch of different skin colors uh, taller, shorter, uh, it's a bunch of, you know, sliders, uh, markings, which you can't see because I have armor on, but it's changing its fur, fur markings, I guess. And then you have the head options, there's also a, a triangular slider here. Uh, if you've played, uh, Fallout 4, you actually might recognize this triangular slider. They actually, uh, this game came out before Fallout 4. I'm not sure if Fallout 4 stole that, or if, uh, if that was just something they were going to do anyway. Uh, you have a hair color, or eye color. Anyway, I'm going to hit randomize a couple times to see if we can get someone who looks okay. Here, how's, how's, how's this guy with his little headband? Let's pick him. Let's go ahead and create. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and uh, play the tutorial. You might notice with the dialogues in this game, it's kind of interesting how it shows you a dialogue and the three options will have the three keys that execute that option. I have a gripe about this game which is this is an mmo that was originally designed to be on pc obviously but also playstation and xbox and it is it's on all three of those platforms but here's the weird thing is because of that they designed this mmo to work with the controller and then for the pc copy they retrofitted it to work with your keyboard but they did a really lazy job so all they did is basically a one-to-one -one mapping of keyboard keys to uh controller keys so anyway uh, here we go. We wake up in a prison, uh, like a lot of Elder Scrolls games. Um, you can hit Waz to move, so let's move. I'm guessing they want us to go towards the gate. Whoa there. Are you alright? The name's Lyris. I recognize some of these voices. There's actually quite a bit of voice talent in this game. Fight left in you. You're going to need it. Okay, so we can hit E to open the door. And... Okay, so... We're in Cold Harbor. Uh, there's an Iron Maiden there, I, I guess. Uh, this has actually changed since the last time I played this tutorial. It's kind of way different now. Believe it or not. Um, and so our, our goal here is to loot a weapon. So... Oh, let's loot this uh, Dramora. Oh good, a great sword. Keep your weapon ready and stay sharp. Okay. This place is full of surprises. Controls here are, are uh, because I don't have my toolbar yet, it's actually exactly I'm basically playing Skyrim right now. Um, of course I can go into third person camera and it has a better third person camera. Uh, like most MMOs. Uh, let's 
just give me a tutorial here. Uh, like most MMOs, uh, it's really designed to be played from third person from pretty far away. Um, I like to keep my camera kind of close so my character is front and center. I, I really am not a fan of... I know a lot of people play uh, MMOs like this where the camera is like literally as far away as you can make it. Your character's a little dot in the center of the screen. I don't like that, but I understand why people do it because of the... Uh, a lot of MMOs have just huge, huge enemies that are... Ooh, good crawlers. Um... Huge enemies that fill the whole screen, and so there's really no other way to, to get a good overview of what's going on. So we're following uh, Lyris, who is uh, uh, that actress whose name I can't remember, but she's basically contractually obligated to star in every single video game, so you've heard her voice a million times before. Let's go feed these prison guards here. Now it's teaching me how to block, so, again, this is pretty Skyrim right here. Um, if I hit left and right mouse button at the same time, you can interrupt spell casting, and then if you hold your left mouse button, you do a power attack, and that's... Let's get out of here, my for these friend. tutorial enemies, that's an instant kill, but in the actual game, oh, it takes you like 30, 30 Greetings, hits. Wesley. Like you, I'm a prisoner in this place. You must rescue me, and I, in turn, must rescue you. Hold a moment. Come here. We need to talk. The Prophet. He's a prisoner here, too. It was very dangerous for him to speak to you, even for a moment. You must think you can help me. Break him out, of course. Believe me, I can use all the help I can get. That blind old man is the only person alive who can help us get back home. Tamriel's a long way from here. These tunnels will eventually take us to the Towers of Eyes. That's where we'll find the Sentinels. Magical constructs created by Molag Bal to guide his vision in Cold Harbor. The Sentinels are connected. If we destroy one, the others will be blinded. With any luck, that will buy us the time we need to free the Prophet. I've no idea. Brute force? We'll find a way. We have to. Be ready for anything. I doubt Molag Ball left the Sentinels unguarded. Okay, I do have many questions, but I'm just going to hit goodbye because I don't want to sit here and, and talk to her for the entire video. But uh, you get the point. Uh, so we woke up in Cold Harbor, which is Molag Ball's personal realm of hell, more or less. They don't call it hell in Elder Scrolls, but it, it more or less is. And, uh, ooh, yuck. There's a lot of death going on here. So basically, there's a prison riot. And um, we're escaping along with the other prisoners. Uh, we hooked up with this uh, this chick who knows how to. Ooh, can we use all the skills we have learned? Uh, who knows how to, uh, or knows this guy called the Prophet, who has a way to get us out of Cold Harbor, which seems like it would be pretty difficult. But hey, whatever. And as you can see there, uh, that enemy made us use well, all of the friend. skills we have learned. I had to block, and then I had to. Uh, block casting. Let's go ahead and hit our character window. Okay, here we go. So we have attribute points. Right now I have zero magicka, zero health, and zero stamina. I've always wondered why. I mean, it's a booster. It's not like you actually have zero health. I've always wondered why they did it that way. It didn't start you out with like 10 or some kind of some kind of amount, you know. So let's go ahead and do that. And then let's look at the skill screen. So this is kind of interesting. So these are our class skills. So we have uh, three uh, skill lines in our class skills. Every one of them consists of five active abilities, which means stuff that goes in your toolbar. My toolbar is actually down here. One ultimate ability, which if you've ever played a MOBA, this is your ultimate. Uh, you build up ultimate points by doing regular attacks, and then every so often you can use your ultimate ability. And then they all have a few passives, I think three or four or maybe five passives. And so we have three different skill lines in our class. You can pick like you can just basically go down the line and do all the flame ones, all the power ones, all the earth and heart ones, or you can mix and match. Uh, you also have weapon skills. So the interesting thing about this game is you'll notice that the weapon skills are pretty much exactly like the class skills. So again, if you wanted to play with a bow, you can actually be a warrior, uh, a dragon knight type warrior. God, this guy's face is stupid. Look at that. Anyway, you can be a dragon knight warrior with the bow and you have a full range of classes here you have your own ultimate you have your active abilities you have your passive abilities and then there's a lot of different weapons there's uh two-handed one-handed plus a shield there's dual wield 
uh, bow, destruction staffs, and restoration staffs, which, don't worry, you can actually do damage with the restoration staffs in the game. But, uh, obviously a healer would, would prefer restoration staffs, mage destruction staffs, um, or you could do, like, one-handed and have a dagger. I mean, you have a ton of options of how you work. One of the big promotions of this game is that you can play however you want, and it actually does a really good job of implementing that. And then, of course, you have your, your armor, light, medium, heavy. There's not a lot to talk about there, except for each armor also has, uh, like, an active ability you can use that just might... It just basically uh, boosts your armor for a period of time. And then each race has their own abilities. This is also... Um, previous Elder Scrolls games, each race had their own abilities. This is uh, this game's implementation of that. It's kind of cool. Uh, the Khajiit ones are, are based around stealth and... Uh, this one actually increases your crit rate, which is kind of interesting. And then, of course, you have it's an MMO, so you know you have to have crafting. So you have the crafting skills. Uh, you start at level one in all the crafting. And for some reason, I have a recipe improvement. I don't know why, but uh, oh, I guess I guess you start on level one on a couple of these. Anyway, whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, pick our first power. So we can do spiked armor. Uh, this is increase our physical resistance and spell resistance, so that's basically a defensive thing. These are more offensive skills. Slash an enemy with flame, dealing flame damage. Okay, let's go ahead and learn that. So, I'm gonna do a lava web. Whip. Web. Web. Oh, here's another thing to mention. You might notice this say, or you might notice this says lava whip one. The reason it says that is you can level up these abilities, and so you can... Oops, it's already on the toolbar, because it automatically does that for me. Um, you can level up to, like, four or five, I think, and when you level past a certain point, you actually get to choose... Uh, I don't know what they call it, mutate or whatever, but you can actually choose different abilities that happen. So, for instance, Lava Whip 1 just does flame damage, right? Then if I level up, I might get an option that says, if, instead of affecting one enemy, it affects three enemies that are in front of you. Or I might get one that says, not only does it affect flame damage, but it does a stun for five seconds or whatever. So you can actually mutate these abilities. Um, you can see that I used my one skill point. There's also a counter for Sky Shards, which we'll find later on. But Sky Shards, basically, if you collect three of them, you get a skill point. Okay, so let's continue down this tutorial area here. Use uh, our sprint to make it a little faster. The problem with... Uh, with warrior characters that uh, rely heavily in, and rogues who rely heavily on stamina is that if you sprint to get places faster you also reduce your combat effectiveness because all of your skills not all but a lot of your skills use stamina instead of mana the god of schemes can see every part of cold harbor we need to distract him okay so we need to distract molag ball somehow here's another new player in the world this is an mmo so you will see random people here's a dead argonian on the floor uh, you'll notice people inside Cold Harbor have kind of these sunken eyes with are all white and they have wear really pale skin, so anyway, um Let's go ahead and try our new ability. Flame weapon sky. Okay, good. I blocked the spell, made him dizzy. Target practice? Oh, that's funny there's that machine clanks a lot, doesn't it? Wow, I don't even know what it does. But it's, a, it's a clanky machine. Let's see if I can get crushed. No, no, they thought of that. You can't get crushed in the machine. Okay, so uh, I have two objectives here. Let's go through these gates. And um, I guess the boss is at the top of these gates. Let's block this guy's power attack. Then I can flame whip him and do my own power attack here. Uh, just a whale on the mouse. And, you know, I don't want to pay attention to the combat. No, it is kind of good. Uh, it is an MMO, so you know when you're coding an MMO, you have to be very sensitive of leg issues and stuff like that. But they did a very good job of making it feel like actual combat. Like you can't just—it's not like World of Warcraft where it's just like you hit one, four, three, four, one, four, three, four, over and over, and that's your optimal combat. In this game, you actually have to watch for your enemies when they uh, when they power attack or perform oh good it's teaching us how to sneak so we're gonna go ahead and sneak towards this eyeball which let's wait for him to turn around again because he's staring right at me right now okay here we go so we're gonna whoops don't look at me don't look at me eyeball so we're gonna do a power attack boom good i am the sneakiest of all somehow i unsneaked there i don't know because i did power attack Quickly, that... while he's blinded we must get to the prophet's cell okay where's the prophet's cell don't I have another one of these eyeballs to kill? Um, okay, anyway, let's just follow the waypoints. 
Man, those machines are clanky. This whole video is going to be clank, clank, clank. Anyway, sorry. Okay, here we go. The Prophet's cell. Straight ahead. I guess you only had to kill one of the two eyes. You didn't have to kill both of them? Sure, why not? Oh, wow. Fool. You will never escape my realm. Okay, we're never going to escape the realm. Molag Ball saw us. The door's warded. We'll never get in this way. I realize I should probably uh, turn on. For some reason in this game, uh, the settings are per character. So, uh, so when you do something like turn on subtitles, it only applies to the one character you turn it on for. It's, it's really odd. I don't get that, but whatever. Damn it. Destroying the Sentinel must have triggered these wards. We'll need to find another way in. Maybe Cadwell can help us. Cadwell is the oldest of the Soul Shriven. After years of torment, Soul Shriven usually go insane and turn feral. But not Cadwell. He was already insane before he left Tamriel. Mad as a box of frogs, but completely harmless. You'll see. Cadwell sees things as he wishes them to be. To him, Cold Harbor is a wondrous place. It's his home. And he knows it like the back of his hand. <sighs> One thing I don't understand about this game, if you listen to that conversation, she's talking about this Cadwell character who's basically free to go where... I mean, this is basically... So Molag Ball steals your soul and puts you in this Cold Harbor prison. And most people here look like this. Like, they're just kind of dead in the soul. They're dead-eyed and they just kind of stand there and don't do anything, right? That's what most people are. But for some reason, it allow it, he also, Molag Ball, also allows these people incredible freedom to like walk around and meet people and it's just it's kind of weird so here's cadwell you might recognize this voice i think he uh he tried to sell someone a parrot at some point hello what's this out for a stroll in lovely day for it sir cadwell yes indeed a pleasure and fair lyris good to see you my dear how are you then Oh dear, oh dear. Well, that is inconvenient, isn't it? Tell you what, I happen to know another way in. Much more of a scenic route. Rather a fun little jaunt, actually, full of traps and corpses and nasty beasties filling up the bits in between. Rather cautiously, I expect. Watch your step, hold your nose, and do mind the traps. The like as not be a fair dose of running and skull bashing as well. Follow the river. You'll find the door to the Undercroft at the water's end. Once you're inside, stick to the light, and you'll find a ladder that will take you right up to the Prophet straight away. Do give him my best. Best of luck. Do check in now and again, won't you? So, uh, Cadwell's kind of, kind of the comedy relief character. Cadwell seems to think this Undercroft is a delightful place. But Probably also, whenever you're in, um... In Cold Harbor, which is actually pretty frequent in this game, honestly, but uh, whenever you're in Cold Harbor, he always seems to know exactly what's going on, and later in the game, you get a chance to rescue him if you want to, and uh, he doesn't adapt well to life outside, which is kind of interesting. Oh. He's teaching me how to pick locks. The sooner you get that door open, the sooner we can get out of here. Yeah, yeah, shut up. I totally forgot about the lockpicking minigame. So basically, you lower these... Uh, it's different from the one in Skyrim or Fallout, but basically you lower the pins until they just start vibrating a little bit, and then you have to let go of the mouse at the right moment. If you hold them down too long, your uh, your lockpick will break, and uh, you have to start over with one fewer lockpicks. Lockpicks are actually an item in this game, so... Oh, hey, a belt. I don't know what these guys are looking at. Empty boxes. Oh, do you see that rat on the ground? This is, again, an MMO, so one of the things MMOs do is more, it, it gives you a really uh, good visual indication of where attacks are going to land to give you an opportunity to dodge them. And part of that is the whole, uh, you know, when a game has to run over the network, you have to make sure it's playable, even for people with, like, 500 milliseconds of latency, so it's not something you can do in, uh, in a desktop game. It does kind of ruin the immersion a little bit to have, like, a giant red... Uh, giant red indicator on the ground telling you where the attack's gonna come, but, you know, hey, whatever. It's an MMO. It follows MMO conventions for the most part. Okay, so I'm basically in this dungeon area trying to find this door. But there's skeletons, there's flame chaps. I really love, uh, I'm gonna praise the graphics of this game. This graphic, this game has really good graphics. And in fact, I'm kind of upset that when, uh, 
Like, when they did the Skyrim remaster, if they were a little more aggressive about it, they could have imported, like, the character models from this game into Skyrim. Even if they kept most of the world the same, I don't think it would have looked that out of place. And it would have made a huge improvement, because this game has excellent character models. And, of course, there's a lot of uh, uh, LOD, level of detail scaling going on, because, again, it is it is an MMO. But uh, if, you, if you imported these characters to a desktop engine like Skyrim, you wouldn't have to do any of the LOD. It would just be full quality all the time. And it would look really good, but they, they did not do that, so that's okay. They really didn't do anything for Skyrim Special Edition, except for just made it compatible with, uh, made it compatible with Xbox. That's about all they did. I mean, Xbox One and PS4 instead of 360. Anyway, um, okay, so these traps, much like the big red diagram, uh, that gives you a clue as to when the enemies are gonna, where the enemies are gonna hit, you also have these traps that give you a clue as to, uh, when they're about to shoot gas. Okay, we got a lot of weapons here. Let's, uh, let's wear a dagger. Look at that. I got a dagger now. Uh, I can also put on a belt if I want. Uh, the dagger does a thousand damage. By the way, the numbers in this game, if you're used to other video games, the numbers in this game are grossly inflated. Like, whereas in Skyrim, a dagger might do four damage, this dagger does over a thousand damage. And I'm literally level two. So, go figure. I like it. It makes you feel powerful when you hit someone at level 50 and you're doing like 60,000 damage a hit, but... Since everything else does 60,000 damage a hit, it's not really that big a deal. It's more like slot machine mechanics, where it's just like, oh, huge numbers, but everything's a huge number, so it's not that big a deal. The good news is we made it here in one piece, and the prophet looks unharmed. Now the bad news. It's going to be up to you to keep him safe and get him back to Tamriel. I'm not going with you. There's a trick to opening the cell. The only way for a prisoner to leave is for another living soul to take their place. I need to swap places with the prophet. Oh. Believe me, I wish there was, but I don't see anyone else here with a beating heart, do you? If Molag Ball isn't stopped, he'll destroy everyone and everything. This is something I'm confused about, too, is Lyris has her soul, but no one else here does, including you, the player. In fact, you're called Soul Shriven, I think, uh, at the end of this quest line. But what I don't understand is he's basically saying that to get the prophet out of this cage she has to take his place because she has a soul and he has a soul and anyone who has a soul will be trapped in it so basically she goes in and pushes him out but what i don't understand is why she has a soul once it's done get moving oh, whatever the prophet will know where to go but he'll need your eyes and your protection basically i have to defend her while she does this magical thing which uh everyone in skyrim knows how to i mean everyone in elder scrolls online knows how to do all these magical things you wouldn't necessarily expect from like a a half giant with a giant axe on her back, but hey, whatever. Oh. I guess I should pay attention to the game here. So you can see I get some different animations with my dagger. You can dodge his attacks with the red, the red diagram on the ground. The thing I don't have uh, yet is a rush attack because anyone who's played MMOs know how handy it is to have an attack that basically, and I think almost every class in an MMO has one of these, uh, attack where you basically rush towards the enemy and knock him down for a second. And this class in ESO does actually have one of those attacks, I just I can't remember. Another thing this game has for an MMO is really good uh, predefined animations like that. They're all in engine, but it's like freedom. Yeah. I remember this feeling. It will be fitting though if Molog Bal has his way. Okay, here's the prophet. Thank the divines, you are safe. There is that at least. Lyra sacrificed everything that we might go free. Her sacrifice must not be in vain. Uh, the prophet also has a voice you might recognize, but. Off the top of my head, I don't, and I can't remember who it is. I looked it up in IMDb earlier, and uh, sadly, I forgot. I wish that were possible, but I promise you, once we escape Cold Harbor, we will find a way to rescue her together, Vestige. That is the name I have given you. You are but a trace of your former self, a soulless one, an empty vessel that longs to be filled. It is. Okay, so basically he's saying I also have no soul. I'm in Cold Harbor, I have no soul, but I'm fresh, so I haven't been, like, uh, 
turn to white like the other people with no soul, which apparently is a process that takes some time. I'm not sure. Oops, I need to finish talking to him. I thought I was done. Oops. Thank the divines you are safe. That is the name I have given you. That is what I'd come to be called. My true name is lost even to me. That's not true. He's Years a liar. of torment have taken their toll. Quickly now. We must make haste to the anchor. The anchors are Daedric machines of the darkest magic. Their chains bind our world and pull it towards cold. Okay, so Up we're about to get a quickly. preview of we must get to the anchor mooring. of Molag Ball's evil plan here, and it's kind of interesting. If you've uh, played Oblivion, it sounds a little familiar, and it is. Uh, but basically what he's trying to do is he's trying to merge all of Tamriel or, or Mundus, basically the mortal world, the world that we are. He's trying to gr basically grab it and suck it into Cold Harbor. And the way he does that is kind of interesting and very, very, like, visually great. And I love it. There it is. The Dark Anchor Mori. If you've seen Oblivion, you might recognize those circles. And what will happen is... Wow, look at that big monster. The mortal thinks it can defy me. Futile. Soon your world will be in my chains. Come, I will protect you. Okay, so basically the uh I don't know why I why I picked that. Break free of what? Oh, I have some kind of effect on me. Um, by the way, you can dodge roll in this game. Uh, so basically his plan is he's going to, um, he's opening these Oblivion Gates, or what we call Oblivion Gates in Oblivion, and, uh, he's sending through them chains and anchors to anchor into the ground of Mundus and literally physically pull, uh, Mundus slash Tamriel, just physically pull it into his realm, and it looks incredibly amazing and hopefully we'll get to I'm already 30 minutes in but hopefully we'll get to that before the end of the video come on prophet talk to me the dark anchors portal is high above us I will prepare a spell to lift us to it but first you must reattune yourself to Nan in order to regain your physical form to do this you will need a sky shard a shard of ethereal magicka that carries the essence of Nan some link them to Lorcan the missing god of creation. If you collect and absorb its power, it should restore your corporeal form. I will summon one of you. So, basically the quest in this game is, well, the quest for you, oh, there's a lot of quests in this game. The, for your Shard character, your experience. goal is to Hold regain your soul. And and so there's a single passion. player campaign that, that in the there, in the release game went all 45 shot. levels or so, and you only regained your soul at the very end of it, but, the funny thing is they've actually uh, done a patch to this game to make it levelless basically everywhere. So hey, almost every, gosh, in fact I think every area in the game has no level restrictions I've on what you can do when. Respect. And so if you want to, you can actually buy this Let game and go through your character's story. Just uh, wham wham wham, one, two, three, home. just that go through your character's story all at once. Which is kind of an interesting change and it kind of Hurry, it breaks now. a few things because of the... Uh, woo, go uh it breaks a few things because of the way that the uh that the game works it's kind of interesting but uh it's not not breaks it's just that if you do like the last couple quests of the solar campaign it kind of assumes that you've completed one of the faction campaigns because they all end at like i think they all end at level 45 and the solo one keeps going to level 50 so you'll get dialogue that doesn't really make sense okay so here we go i've just woken up the vestige awakens once again in the world come here we must speak. As I feared, we arrived in different locations. I am in a city near the sea, in a land of eternal spring. The air smells of the ocean, and of markets and gardens. It matters not. You have awakened once again, and we must set you on your path. Days, weeks, I cannot tell. The voids between worlds disrupted all sense of time and space. I know only that you were deposited into the sea, and some charitable soul fished you out and brought you to dry land. By the way, regardless of which faction you choose, you're always drawn dumped into the sea, uh, and you wake up either on a boat, or in this case a lighthouse, or somewhere next to the sea. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if that means anything, but... I'm afraid you will have to decide that for yourself. 
I must focus on searching for a way to repay Lyris's bold sacrifice. I cannot simply abandon her to the wrath of Merlod Ball. I cannot foresee that, not yet. But we will meet again. There is still much we need to accomplish. Be wary, Vestige. Our very plane of existence is in peril. The threat... You must find your own path. So basically he's telling you, okay, you're in the world now, you can kind of do what you want. Uh, you wake up in this lighthouse, and I'm in a place called Eagle Strand. And now we're in an MMO. So basically this is the traditional MMO. Oh man, Razumdara. Razumdara, I love this guy. Welcome to Canarthi's Roost, friend. The hurricane must have been very disorienting. So many injured, confused. Keep your voice down. Try not to draw attention. Razumdar is the best character in this game. He is amazing and I love him. Razumdar is here on a mission of some uh, delicacy. You are just what the Bandari ordered. Between your hands and Raz's good looks, we are certain to see this through. First, a question. Where did you come from? Let's see. Let's say he wouldn't believe me if I told you. If you landed five paces north, you'd have squashed a rat, slipped on its guts, and cracked your head on a signal drum. The whole island would have known of your arrival. I guess you have to say Cold Harbor. So where did you come from, truly? A Daedric prince, you say? Raz has a nose for lies, but you seem clean as an ocean breeze. Hmm. If anyone else asks you, where will you say you came from? Let's mess with him and give him the same answer. <laughs> My, my, you're a focused one, aren't you? It is good to be focused, but it is also good right now to fit in. Your sudden arrival, it does not fit in, you understand? You should not. You should trust your instincts. Live if you wish. No one will stop you. Or, come with Raz and do what you can to help us recover. In the process, grow your stature and wealth. It is entirely up to you. Because you are no soldier, which is useful. You can speak with the locals, assure them we are not invaders or marauders. Now come, let us try to fit in. Raz is this great character. He's kind of like, uh, he's kind of like, how do I even explain it? He's kind of like the James Bond of this world, but he's like really full of himself. He's kind of like, uh, he's more like Archer than James Bond almost, but he's, I don't know makes me laugh a lot okay so this is a tutorial area uh let's take a look at the map it's actually just this small island i think i'm going to go ahead and skip it if i remember right uh sugar claws is uh is the way to skip the tutorial um this is typical uh mmo stuff you go through do you know quests and yada 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 you've seen it before but what i want to do is i want to go ahead and uh find the prophet again and he has a he has a really cool cutscene type thing that will come up in just a second so let's talk to sugar claws i don't care to sail through corpses but if i dock at mistral they'll inspect my cargo which is all legitimate i assure you where do you need to go i can take you to vulkel guard in oridon I have many things to sell to the house. I love how she adds. All of them legal. Everything is legal at the end of every statement. Okay, so this is the actual, like, level starting area. I think it's actually level five. But like I said, the whole game is levelless now, so none of that matters anymore. So you can go anywhere you want. In fact, you're not even restricted to your faction anymore, which is uh, one of those changes, again, that is so is so counter to the original design of the game that it, it makes the dialogue kind of work funky. There you are. But, um... Only you can see. Let's take a look at the map. Uh, this is the area I'm in. Vocal Guard is, I guess that's the name of the city. Yeah. Um, and I'm on this little island here. Uh, and here's the entire world. Uh, Cyrodiil's in the center. Uh, they left a lot of space for expansion. So I don't know how well you can make this out in the video, but a lot of the map is still kind of blank. But basically the factions are... They all start at the edge of the continents and work towards the center, with Cyrodiil being the uh, the end game PvP content, 
kind of an interesting design for how it works. So we have uh, the faction. I, I, I wish I could remember the faction names, but all of them have about five questioning areas. Uh, and from the very beginning of the game, you can teleport to their uh, starting. This is Canarthi's Roost, where we started, to their starting zones and to their uh, capital cities. And so it's kind of cool that way. Um, but let's go ahead and... Oh, you can also zoom out one more because there's also Cold Harbor on the map. Which, actually, it turns out that Cold Harbor is a questing location. I don't know if you're intended to be able to zoom out this far from the start. Because it, it would have been much more dramatic if they only let you zoom out this far when you hit level 45 and got the ability to get, go to Cold Harbor. But they didn't. And like I said, with the, the level change, it doesn't matter anyway. There you are, Vestige. We must speak at once. Listen well. I have located a safe harbor from which we might plan our course of action. You must meet me there. I awoke upon a sandy shore, a stretch of beach, outside a bustling city of elves, Vokel Guard. The harborage is in a seaside cave outside the city. It is there that you will find me. I will say that these, this, uh, the story quests are a little bit perfunctory, but one of the things that's great about this game is the writing. This game has amazingly good writing, and most of the good writing is kind of counterintuitively and weirdly not in the main quest, although the main quest has some good movements. But a lot of it is just in kind of the random quests you do as you walk around the world. Um, and I will say that the first time I played this game, compared to every other MMO I've played, this is the first Hold MMO I've there. played where the writing is so good Honor and praise. I that, no, no, you're and again, sorry. not not every character, not every quest, but the writing is so good that, like, this is the first MMO where I really read and paid attention and listened to the voice acting for every single character because it really is good. Oh, well, one thing I have, actually, since I have the, uh, I have other characters, uh, I have mounts I can wear, so I should, I should put up myself on a horse. Look at that, see, much better. Um, oh wait, let's choose a pet too. Man, you gotta, you gotta get your non-combat pet in the game. Uh, I like the snake guy. How about a little baby mammoth? Which actually I think I'm gonna hate because they're really annoying. Now I have a baby mammoth following me around. Anyway, so here's the Harbridge. This is where the, uh, basically, you'll notice it says solo on the campaign, or on the, on the hint text there. That's because when you're doing story missions, for the main story, at least. They are solo missions. You can't go in with a friend. You have to do it on your, on your own, which is kind of annoying because the whole point of an MMO is that if you run into difficulty, so if you come up with across a mission that you can't pass on your own, you can invite other people to help you. That's like the entire thing about being an MMO. But in this game, you can't. It's just a solo thing. But what's even more annoying is even though it's a solo thing, you can't adjust the difficulty in any way or you can't skip it if you have trouble. So... I'm going to admit to it. Maybe you're going to call me an idiot, but I actually had some of these story missions the first time I played this game as a non-magic-using archer. I had a lot of trouble completing some of these bosses. Now, the thing is, I've recently gone through the story modes again with the same character, and yeah, I didn't have any trouble, so they fixed the battles. Because the whole pitch of the game is that you can play any way you want to, but then they made a couple boss battles, which are almost impossible to beat without using magic skills. Very frustrating to me, and... I kind of rage quit this game for a long time because of that, but anyway. Uh, I think they fixed that. Like I said, I've done it again recently, and it worked okay, and there we go. Welcome to the Harborage Vestige. This is as comfortable a home as an old dried-up husk like myself could hope for. Despite my blindness, nay, because of it, my other senses seem to have heightened. This place had the right smell about it. Indeed, but let us not get ahead of ourselves. Without an understanding of where we are bound, every road will get us nowhere. Before we truly understand our destiny, By the way, this, this, we must speak of the past. The prophet sounds friendly, but like a lot of the stuff he says is a lie. Although you've probably gleaned by now that the reason he's blind, especially if you've played Skyrim, uh, the Dawnguard expansion, the reason he's blind is that he read an Elder Scroll without preparing himself properly, which is, that's the result of it. But uh, when he says he doesn't remember who he is, that's totally a lie. Of a sort. I invite you to enter my mind and walk with me through visions of the past that you might understand the events that brought us to this time, this moment. Okay, so what I'm starting here is basically a cutscene that kind of explains how with me through the Molog Ball gained the power to to create the anchors, and it's it's really interesting and I liked it a lot. It's not it's not combat or running or anything like that, so but, uh, so basically we're appearing in the Prophet's memories right now. 
Follow me, best. Which are a little fragmentary. And, of the events that precipitated our and we're a ghost, but for some reason my mammoth is still there. Let's get rid of that goddamn stupid mammoth. Because that's going to really distract us. The began when I awoke on the steps of the Abbey of the Moth Priests. With no memory of my prior life. Liar. Uh, I don't know why the mammoth would appear in the moth a vision priests like this. took pity upon me and brought me into their fold. I was weak and near death. It was there I first set eyes upon the Elder Scrolls and devoted my life to their study. The scrolls allowed me to glimpse the very fabric of reality, but each profound insight dimmed my vision and eventually left me permanently blinded to the light of the world. I think this cutscene has been changed since the game launched too. I don't remember the part with the Elder Scrolls. Prophecies of the Elder Scrolls are a fluid living thing. They are not fixed. At many points throughout history, the actions of heroic mortals have rewritten them. I only know that you are important, Vestige. The scrolls reveal to me that your destiny is intertwined with that of the Five Companions. The Five Companions were a band of adventurers who sought out an ancient artifact called the Amulet of Kings. They hoped to use this artifact to persuade Akatosh the Dragon God, to accept their leader as one of the Dragonborn. Baron Aquilarius, the son of Colobian Duke, who led a rebellion against the Emperor Leovic and took the crown himself. Alas, Baron was not truly a Dragonborn, as those who sit upon the ruby throne must be, in accordance with tradition. This goes back to uh, lore that you might be interested in if you played Oblivion. Um, and I think it's slightly mentioned in Skyrim, but basically, uh, to be a valid emperor, you have to be dragonborn. But uh, this Varen guy who took over the kingdom was not. And so he created these five companions whose goal was to get the attention of uh, Akatos and convince him to make him dragonborn. You have already heard enough babbling from this old blind fool. It and we're going to find out what happened when he did this. Yourself and witness their fate. The first companion, Lyris Titanborn, daughter of giants, was the mightiest warrior in the service of the Empire. Of we've already met Lyris. Next, Abner Farm, a powerful sorcerer. Grand Chancellor to the Imperial Elder Council. The Red Guard Swordmaster, Sai Sahak, leader of the Imperial Dragon Guard. The Imperial Emperor, Baron Aquilarius, who attempted to light the dragon fires and failed. And finally, Manam Marco, the traitor, the king of worlds, a powerful necromancer. I don't know how he knows that, by the way. These were the five companions who set out from the Imperial City on an epic quest to recover the lost Amulet of Kings. Many Marco convinced Varen that the Amulet could be used to perform a ritual that would rekindle the dragonfires. He claimed this would please Akatosh and entice him to adopt Varen as one of the Dragonborn. By tradition, only the Dragonborn can lay claim to the Ruby Throne. You just explained this, Prophet. You're just repeating yourself. By divine right. Baron conquered Cyrodiil and took the throne. But unless he became Dragonborn, he feared he'd always be thought of as a pretender. Oops, I guess I have to get more. These were the five... By tradition, only the Dragon... Manamarco the traitor! The great enemy, the most powerful necromancer this world has ever known. His worm cult, disaster, war, and pestilence. Okay, here we go. So they're going to do this ritual that's intended to turn Varian into Dragonborn so that he can legitimately rule. The dragon fire brazier. Manimarko. Certain this will work? It will work, my liege. The Amulet of Kings will rekindle the dragon fires and ensure your rightful place as Emperor. You have my word. It better work, Money Marco, or you'll find your neck at the business end of my axe. 
My lord, I wonder if you'd muzzle your half-giant pet. She really is annoying. Enough, both of you. We are here to ensure my lord's rightful claim to the ruby throne. Abner, begin the ritual. I have a destiny to fulfill. Yeah. Funny thing about this By game the is... lighting of the dragon fires, I claim my rightful lineage. By the fires of creation, let me be reborn. By the will of Akatosh, I proclaim myself Dragonborn. Uh, even though Varen is a usurper and not rightful emperor, the game doesn't villainize him for that. He's actually not a bad guy in the game, Varen interestingly enough. Aquarius, you are no heir to Alessia. You will pay for your sacrilege. You veil between Tamriel and Oblivion, tears and splits of thunder. What's happening? The sky's opening up. This is bad. This is very bad. Okay, so basically, uh, yeah, uh, Mane Marco decided he was actually loyal to Molag Val the whole time and uh, betrayed us. The ritual tore the veil between Nairn and Oblivion, allowing Mane Marco to begin stealing the souls his master needed to power the Dark Anchors and initiate the Plain Mill. Akatosh gave Alessia the Amulet of Kings as a symbol of his covenant with Nairn. So long as the amulet remained in the care of Alessia's heirs and the dragon fires remained lit, Tamriel will be protected from the data. By the way, again, this is going back to Oblivion. Basically, if the dragon fires are not lit correctly, the Molag Ball has an open door, basically, to screw with people. And that was actually what caused the Oblivion crisis with the gates appearing at the same time. Manamako tricked Varen into breaking the covenant, and the veil between Oblivion and Nern was torn. The Elder Scrolls named this event the Soul Burst. It gave Molog Baal the opportunity to disconnect the souls of Nern from their hosts. Varon was lost. In the chaos of the moment, Sai Sahan took the Amulet of Kings and fled. Leris was captured by Menamako and delivered to Cold Harbor, the realm of Molog Baal. Thaun remains Chancellor of the Elder Council, and his daughter Tribio rules as Empress Regent. But the true power remains in the hands of Manimarco and his worm cult. When I discovered the truth about the five companions, I made subtle inquiries, but apparently not subtle enough. Manimarco got word of my interest and abducted me. He took me to Cold Harbor, where I remained a prisoner until you freed me. The truth is always a threat to evil men. Manamarco feared I would reveal his treachery, and if knowledge of Nan's vulnerability were to become known, it could threaten his master's schemes. Molog Baal does not favor loose ends. Walk with me. Long ago it was written, so long as the amulet of kings was borne by Alessia's heirs, Tamriel would be protected from the forces. Man, I realize how much story this game dumps on you when you first started. <laughs> Usually I kind of skip past the dialogue. The first time I played it, I read it all, of course. So here's the anchor coming down. I always love the special effect. That's basically the other end of what we saw when we were in Cold Harbor. You can see the uh, Oblivion Gate hovering above, and then these big anchors crash down onto these uh, these special altars that have been built by the Worm Cult. And uh, the more anchors are, you know, gripped onto, the more that the mortal world gets pulled into Molag Balk's realm. So your goal is basically to destroy the anchors. You will merge our world and his own. Well, you have several goals. <laughs> Few will survive the ordeal. Those that do will be enslaved for all eternity. And so it falls to us, Vistage. We must stop Molog Baal and his dark anchors, or our world is doomed. And now history seems to have caught up with us. Shall we return to the harborage? As you say. 
Okay, so that gives you a good idea of the story of the game. Ooh. So, uh, you're basically a character who escaped from Cold Harbor. Your soul was ripped from your body uh, by one of the worm cult. You escaped from Cold Harbor. Uh, the backstory of why you were captured and why your soul was taken. And, so begins, and wow, wow, wow. The remainder of the story has yet to be written. It is your story now. And there is so much to do. But know this. You will not walk this path alone. We must grow in strength and in numbers. You will need more than the company of an old blind man to alter the course of history. We must assemble our own group of companions. The first you have already met. Lyris sacrificed her own freedom to allow us to escape. She remains a prisoner in Cold Harbor. I must determine her precise... Minamako's agents leave a web of lies and deceit. Forgive me. Basically saying go out and do a bunch of quests. Um, now, again, the... Look at my skill points. Woohoo! Um, the interesting thing about this game is since they... Uh, since they removed the, uh, the level abilities... You, uh, there's nothing that stops you from just going and, um, sorry, I'm distracted while I'm trying to talk here. Uh, there's nothing that stops you from just going out and doing all the story missions right now at, like, level three, which is kind of interesting. Like I said, it kind of breaks stuff a little bit. Not hugely, but it's, it's weird. It's just, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do, so. Let's go out, let's follow his advice, let's go out in the world and maybe, I don't know, do a quest. It's. You guys get an idea how the game works, I think. It, it is an MMO, so it's not exactly like other uh, other Elder Scrolls games. But at the other end, it is the most uh, Elder Scrolls-esque MMO I've ever played in my life. And, and I do enjoy playing it. And uh, it's not at all a bad game. Um, like you've already seen, the graphics are frankly beautiful for an MMO. It's about two years old now, I think. A little, uh, maybe a little over two years old, but roughly two years old. So, uh, uh, it still looks amazing. The art design is amazing. Like I said, the writing is, in a lot of places, the writing is just amazing, amazingly good. Like, this game has, uh, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it, this game has brought me to tears multiple times. Um, it is just, the writing is just that good. And, and like I said, the complication is it's frustrating when you say that because you can say, oh, the writing in Oblivion is that good. But then there's some quests that are bad. And so, like, every Elder Scrolls game is kind of like you take the good and the bad. And so while there are quests that are so well written that they brought me to tears, and a lot of them are not um, – well, I'll explain that in a second. But there's also a lot of quests that are just kind of perfunctory, you know, MMO stuff. I'm just going to ride around for a while here. Um, so basically what you do is, uh, it's a large open world, you can go where the heck you want. Um, when you open your map, you'll see icons like these. So Sicilian has a little town icon. Uh, there's actually a, a camp here that lets you craft items too. Whenever you see an icon like the Sicilian icon, that means this is a quest area. So if you pull into town here, uh, there'll be a character that runs up and gives you a quest to do. Usually, not always, usually. Um, and, uh... Um, yeah, it's also an MMO, so you see other people. And the uh, the quest will be, uh, you know, just like a normal quest line in a normal MMO. You do uh, five or six quests, however many it is, and then what will happen is... Oops, these guys are evil. Um, what will happen is the uh, the icon for the town, instead of being black, will turn uh, white. Well, it basically fills in. Oops. Um, and uh, when it fills in, you're, you're done with that area and you move on. And of course, you can you can keep like twenty or thirty quests in your quest log at any time, so it's not like you have to do everything in order or anything. And then, uh, oh, I guess the note I guess the note is the quest here in this in this area. So you actually have to kill a person before you get the note. That's interesting. Yeah, there we go. Help repel the attackers. Okay, so uh, yeah, normally it's a person who runs out to you and gives you a quest, but in this case they they mix it up a little bit, which is interesting because it's basically the very first quest you'll see if you if you start this game um i want to see if i can run around and see if we can find any skyrim s content so one of the cool things about this game as an mmo is that you will uh oh here you go there's a there's a quest giver Father, oh it's ellen win she's actually a pretty big character in the game salen is under siege we must get this madness under control can't you smell the smoke Silsalen is under attack. I 
They're agents of so she is, uh, if I remember right, she's an employee of the Mage Guild, and she's uh, fighting a battle throughout this game. Uh, you'll contact her from, like, basically level 1 to level 45 at various, various points, and she's fighting a battle against, uh, oh, uh, uh, the guy who makes you go nuts. What's his name? Um, Shio Gorath. Uh, she and him have kind of a, a back and forth. And so Shio Gorath will go into, like, Sicilian, will go into towns, and, uh, and she'll try to keep people sane and not mad. So here we go, one of the Mundus Stones. These are in every Elder Scroll game. This game is no exception. I just heard an anchor come down, but I'm not sure I can see it. I think it's behind that hill. So the cool thing about anchors is you can see them from everywhere. They basically look like the one that we saw in our, in our, you know, our vision. But of course, in the real, real, in the, in the world, there it is. Um, the uh, altars that anchors hook onto are called dolmens. So. If you hang around a dolmen long enough, you'll get an anchor, and then you go in there and do a thing. This is basically, basically you defeat a bunch of a bunch of enemies. What's interesting is they actually kind of, uh, if you've ever played the MMO Rifts, which I'm pretty sure no one has, I think, oops, oops, I'm sorry, I hit the guild page. Uh, I think I'm the only one in history who's ever played Rifts, but there's an MMO that has this exact same con concept. Wow. In the newbie areas, there are a crap load of people. Consume them, each one. It's amazing. Um, I don't know. I'll even get a hit on. Uh, I've never. I don't remember doing newbie area dolmens before, but holy Your crap! Strength will be rewarded one day. That's pretty amazing. Um, let's see if I can find the chest in between the eight thousand people other trying to get. This is the problem with MMOs. This is the big problem with MMOs. Like, the game is not, it's just frustrating when you have like 50 people all clipping through each other and stuff. That's a cool horse though, ice horse. It's, I don't know, I, 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 almost, I, I wish that they would have, and I know this will never happen, but uh, if they had more creative project owners, I really want them to unpack this MMO and turn it into a single player game. And basically just all of the, all of the area quest lines, all of the, the, I mean, already you have to do them solo. So obviously all of the personal quest lines all the guild quest lines, except for a few exceptions, can already be completed solo. So if they just remove the server and just have the game as is, but without the server component, Please. I would have been a huge fan Please. of that. But here's another quote, or a quest that. quote, another quote quest. Um, yeah, like I said, you get the idea. Uh, we got in kind of late to that dolmen, but when with the like 8,000 people that were all that we're all going after it it would have that dolmen would have closed pretty quick and and yeah I don't, I don't i'm gonna look up i wonder if that rift game is still running that mmo that was about it was basically the same premise which is like you were wandering the world but every so often a rift would open and all these enemies would flow through and you'd have to defeat all the enemies and when i played eso and they said oh the anchors and you have to defeat all the enemies to make the anchors go away oh i'm like oh like rift and then of course everyone was like I don't think anyone in the universe has played that game other than me. I don't know how popular it was. I don't know if it's still running. Maybe it's big in Korea or something. So uh, let's go ahead and visit the monkey house. I actually remember this from the last time I played through this area. This is the monkey house it's full of monkeys. And uh, they have soul gems in their fireplace. I don't know if the monkeys get a lot of heat off those soul gems. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that gives you an idea for uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Um... If you don't know by now if it's a game you'd enjoy or not, I, I just don't know what to say. Uh, it's 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 pretty good. It's it's a good MMO. It's better as a game than it is as a multiplayer game, in my opinion. So might try that. I I have barely dipped into the end game content because the story writing is so good. I like going through the stories. There's three factions that all have long, like 25 hour stories. So there's plenty of material there. And then you also have. Uh, a quest line for the Mages Guild, a quest line for the Fighters Guild, which is called the... What is it called in this game? I can't remember. Um, oh, I haven't met them yet, so I don't know what it's called. Anyway, there's uh, there's also uh, skill points that you get for, for joining guilds, which I forgot to mention. Um, the Fighters Guild in this game is pretty funny. They're not called the Companions, but I, I can't remember what they are called. There's also... Uh, if you get the DLCs, there's also the Assassins and Thieves Guild... And basically, there's even if you ignore the multiplayer aspect of the game, there's just gobs and gobs and gobs of content. It's pretty fun to play. 
Um, yeah, so there you go. That's uh, Elder Scrolls Online. There is one more Elder Scrolls game. I don't think I'm going to do it. Not because I don't want to, but because I can't get the damn thing running on my machine. It's called Red Guard. It was a Windows 98 game for, like, Glide Voodoo 2 cards. And it's badly coded, and it barely works. I got it running once. I tried it yesterday. I wasn't able to get it running again. So I'm not sure I'm going to be doing uh, Red Guard. But there is one more Elder Scrolls game. I should mention that in the in the sake of for the sake of completeness. Anyway, uh, see you all later. I hope you enjoyed.